know, teenagers in our community, they have been hit hard by a string of recent tragedies that have made headlines, and parents and grandparents are left trying to help their high school student make sense of events that seem senseless, really. Jessie Funk is the director of Ivy Girl Academy. She joins me with strategies to help teens cope with tragedy, a somber topic, but yet always good to see you. Thank you for bringing your bright light and inspiration to this hard topic. And you know, the headlines, I mean, they hit home for everybody. We had the attack at Mountain View High School not too long ago. We had a tragic car accident in Draper that took the lives of kids way too young. And yeah. what struck me as I watched this news coverage in particular was just, you could see that tragedy and that heartbreak and that sadness, that confusion just stretched across the faces of these kids. They were left not knowing how to cope. Absolutely, and, and really there's some, like psychology, there's some development that kind of plays in. Kids really don't know how. So they desperately need the adults in their lives to show them, to model it, not just tell them what to do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but to model how to deal with tragedy. You have to imagine for most of these kids, it was perhaps their first experience mm -hmm. with tragedy, yeah. with death in some of the more tragic situations. What's the first thing, Jesse, parents can do, grandparents can do or say to help step up and start modeling that behavior you talk about? Yeah, so I know I harp on empathy all the time, but it really is really the only thing that you can do because teenagers are smart they know that you can't fix it for them right, you can't right. make it better but by practicing very real empathy by saying I'm so sorry you're going through this let's let's talk about it let's I'll feed you let's sit down and let's like have some human connection mm -hmm. like to have that moment then kids know they're safe they feel reassured that it's okay, that they have someone in their corner, and to just be able to talk about it. Because they, they want to be mad. They want to be sure. confused. They want to be disappointed. They want to feel those things. And if they don't feel like they're in a safe place to do it, then they'll hold it in. And then that will have disastrous consequences. So just to have the place where kids can vent and feel whatever they're feeling. That's the most important thing. You mentioned I will feed you, and I think that's <laughs> interesting because we lightheartedly toss out this idea of comfort food, but is it mm -hmm. a time from the parenting perspective to step up your comfort game and to Absolutely. step up your caretaking? Yeah, pamper your children. There's nothing wrong with that, especially something like this. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Mountain View and these Draper, this Draper accident. Pamper your kid, Let like snuggle them, let them watch movies all day, let them have a day off. That's okay, that's actually very, very healthy. That's not gonna lead to being being spoiled or anything like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Give them at least a few days of, of just showering them with your love. And as you talk about the empathy being so crucial at a time like this, practicing mm -hmm. and preaching is now a time to share an experience of your own in the vein of that empathy to say, this happened to me when, or mm -hmm. I recall this. Is, is that a, a oh, sharing yeah. opportunity? Yeah, I think probably wait just for maybe a day or two, like let them kind of grieve on their own and figure out what they need to grieve. Because some kids are gonna want to grieve on their own. They're mm -hmm. gonna want their space or some kids are gonna latch onto you. So kind to figure out what they need and mm -hmm. just play it out and see how you feel. Use some emotional intelligence there. But um, absolutely share share a story because that's part of their acceptance process. That's one of the, the levels of grief, you know. So mm -hmm. sharing a story of something you've been through is helpful. And all parents want to protect their kids. I feel like at every stage of the game, but especially in a moment like this, you mm -hmm. say though, helping those teens, almost putting off that protective tendency and helping them accept reality and accept the truth, that's part of this process. It has to be, and that's the hardest part, I think, of going through something so horrible, but sheltering them is not gonna do them any favors. It really isn't. You, this is an opportunity, and I know that's a horrible mindset to have in the moment, but we have to. We have to think, this is an opportunity for my child to learn resilience, to learn bravery, to face life, when, even when it's hard, mm -hmm. and to be able to move forward. So being able to say, you know what, this is something that does happen, it just happens, and I know it's horrible and I know it's so hard, but this is something that we have to prepare you for, for the real world, because this is part of it. In the middle of those tough situations, those tough conversations, you fall back on techniques called active and reactive listening. Mm -hmm. Explain what that is. Yeah, um, active and reflective listening. Oh, those thank are you. the best. Like when you say, uh, obviously active listening is looking them right in the eye, uh -huh. putting away distractions, finding a quiet place, not where other kids are distracting you or you're, you're timing something in the oven or something. Give them all of you, L actually face them. Physically. Yeah, give mm -hmm. them your eye contact, your, your body language is so focused on them. That's active listening. And then reflective listening is saying, so you feel, after they tell you, I feel so frustrated, I'm so angry, and you say, so you're feeling angry about this, so you're feeling this way, you're reflecting what they tell you. You're talking back what yeah. they're saying. And by doing that, they feel heard, mm -hmm, they feel mm -hmm. valued, 
cued and it helps them to process it. And just by being able to organize thoughts, because when our thoughts stay in our mind, they just get bigger and bigger and more chaotic. So when we talk about it, we're organizing our thoughts and they're resuming their rightful size, which helps us process it, which helps us manage it. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. So by reflecting it back, you're helping your child actually process the emotion. I like that visual too of shrinking it down and putting it out. And therapists talk about mm -hmm. that all the time, yeah. right? That by vocalizing our fears, our concerns, our emotion, they lose power over us. Exactly. That's all well and good, assuming a child is willing to talk, yes. and is willing to share. So what about the teen yeah. who is holding it in, bottling it up, and doesn't really want to communicate? Yeah, I think that's where the pampering comes in. So if you know your kid doesn't want to talk about it, they want to be really tough, maybe it's one of your tough football playing kids, you know, and they just want to, they just want to like shut it down, or maybe just ignore it and just pretend like it's not there. That's when I think you can really step up your pampering and just say, hey, let's, you know, with your daughter, let's go get a pedicure. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have to talk about anything. Let's just go get a pedicure. Let's go, let's go to the park and go sit on the swings for a minute or your football player, let's go outside and let's play football for a minute. We don't have to talk, but I just want to spend time with you because yeah. you've been through something real and it's okay to say it. You've been through something real. You've been through something hard. Address it. Exactly. And say, I'm, I'm okay if you don't want to talk about it now, but I need you to know how much I love you and I need you to know that I see you right now and I, I want to help if you need it. So giving them your time mm -hmm. can hopefully mm -hmm. open that door. When they're so emotionally brittle and they're so emotionally vulnerable, but yet you're feeling that those same emotions as well as the parent, how much of that should you show and share with them? Because they're obviously needing that rock and that strength and you wanna be that for them, but mm -hmm. what if you yourself are having a hard time processing that in the moment? Yeah, I, I love what you just said. There has to be a balance. Sure. There absolutely has to. I think if you if you need to, if you can give yourself um, at least three or four days, maybe a week of being the rock okay. and not breaking down, not mm -hmm. crying in front of your kid, I think that's a really good amount of time. But then after that, I think it's completely healthy, even vitally important for you to say I'm having a hard time like this is hard for me I think it's okay for your kids to see you cry because if they see you go through something hard and then you pick yourself up and you move forward and you say I'm gonna get through this mm -hmm. you're modeling and it's not just here's what you do here's how you do it and you mm -hmm. don't have to say a word so the modeling piece is really really important but do be the rock yes at the beginning yes I witnessed a really special moment where I overheard total eavesdrop moment I should say at Chick-fil-a at the yeah. play group uh, this table behind me I didn't know them but the mom apparently was getting a little emotional and the mom said at the daughter said why are you crying and she said I'm missing grandma right now and Aww. I saw her wipe a tear away and the daughter then stepped with this little six-year-old and offered comfort and it was such an, a, a neat experience for me just mm -hmm. to over here and eavesdrop on and see that sharing of emotion mm -hmm. there's always hope in heartache and you point out at the end of the day, that's what parents should be able to provide. Absolutely. And to be able to say, you know what, there's purpose in this. And, and I know that's a hard thing and don't talk about it right off the bat. But after they have some time to grieve, say, you know what, I'm just going to put this out there. You don't have to have a conversation about it. Just say it's a rhetorical question. But I wonder if there's something in this that you were supposed to learn. I wonder if that could be part of who you become and part of how you turn around and help other people. I wonder if there's a lesson in it. And that'll help them find a purpose in it. And there's so many great like nonprofit organizations and great causes out there that, that, that come from pain. Yeah. So giving your kid the opportunity to just think about that can also help with their healing. Beautiful words as always, Jesse. Great inspiration. Thank you so much. Thanks. We'll link you over to the Ivy Girl Academy too if you'd like more helpful resources for teens.